Hey guys, so we all know about the importance of carrier aggregation for that speedy internet connectivity. So let's see which one performs the fastest, a flagship level phone with the Snapdragon 800 series processors or the mid-range-ish OnePlus Nord with the Snapdragon 765G or a more budget-friendly phone, the Poco X3 with the Snapdragon 732G or the hardware doesn't matter all that much, you'll definitely find some interesting surprising results so i was planning to do the test with the airtel sim but here there is no 4g plus service so as a plan b i had to use a geo sim but there was only one sim so i will be doing the test one after the other phone and there will be about 10 minutes difference so it shouldn't make a huge difference so let's start with the flagship phone as you can see it is not showing any 4g plus service because it's not very stable that's also very important we'll talk about it but once I restarted it, you can see it started showing the 4G plus service and also take a look at the bands uh, 850 plus and 2300. Uh, just take a look at this and let's move on with the test now. So we'll start with the fast.com test on the Chrome browser and look at the speeds here. So it's going at about 40 plus, which is uh, just about average I would say for a 4G plus service. So finally we got a score of about 51 Mbps which is again just about decently good. So let me just repeat the test and I'll fast forward it again. So finally the second time we got a proper score 77 Mbps which is much better. So let's test this with the speed test app and it is connected to the closest server and you can see the speeds are like 70 ish you can see here. So the final score is 72.4 Mbps. Now I'm going to download an app from Play Store that's about 100 MB and you can see how long it takes so that's about just about a few seconds like 5 seconds or so. So you can do the math and probably tell how long it takes for 1 GB file to be downloaded, a rough estimate. So let's look at the mid-range phone, look at the bands again. It is connected to the higher bands the 2300 plus 2300 as you can see here. So let me repeat the test fast.com and let's look at the results. I'm going to fast forward this. So the first time the results are like pretty much the same like with the previous test about 54 Mbps. Let me repeat this. Now let me again fast forward and this time it is 71. So that's very similar I would say. So now let's run this speed test app connected to the same server. So now we are getting to see some impressive speeds as you can see going around 100 over 100 that's really impressive. So the final result is 100 as you can see but I'm going to repeat this one more time. So again you can see this is hovering around 90 90 plus which is really impressive but both the ping and the upload speeds are like very similar in both the cases. So now let's download the same app from play store and you can see the timing but if you download a bigger file like 1gb file you will indeed notice a more meaningful difference but i felt this was a tad bit faster so finally let's move on to the budget phone the poco x3 and you can see here it's also connected to the higher frequency band 2300 plus 2300 so let's repeat the test fast.com and the first time itself it started blazing through and you can see it's about 70 plus that's really impressive for a budget phone and upon repeating the test got about similar results feels more consistent and stable so let's start the speed test app and for some reason the ping was like really bad I, you can see here and also the speeds are pretty good as you can see going around 90 and the final result is like 84 plus so overall both the ping and the uploads are almost similar on all of these but the download speed is somewhat different so finally let's download an app from the play store the same app about 100 mb so all of them downloaded in just about five six seconds uh, one second more or less which is really impressive and acceptable for a 4g phone so you guys have seen the speeds but let's talk about the stability i find this flagship phone to be the most unstable in terms of 4g plus connection it goes on and off for some reason you can blame it on the network but i didn't find this happen on the other two phones during this test also these two phones actually got connected to a more higher band higher band means better speeds 
in fact sometimes the flagship phone was showing me the wider band support as you can see here but like i said it's unstable so as per my test i would say for carrier aggregation whether you have a flagship or budget or a mid-range doesn't really matter in fact how well it's implemented is what matters because the hardware alone doesn't do any wonders uh, the software also has to work in tune with the hardware so i feel the implementation is the key here so do share your experiences with the 4g plus service with different phones so that's been it for this video guys please like and share subscribe thanks for watching i'll see you soon